Whether it's a koi pond, water garden, swimming pool, hot tub, or rainwater irrigation system, the centrifugal pump is the heart of the entire system. Most can easily run maintenance free for six to 10 years. With wear and tear, one of the first parts to go though is the ceramic seal. When a seal goes bad, you may notice water leaking from around the shaft. Also, if you're having a problem getting the pump to prime or keeping prime, a worn seal is likely the culprit. Debris constantly running through the pump, sand, as well as plain old age will contribute to ceramic seal failure. But the biggest cause is running a pump dry or without any water flowing through it. The seal has no lubrication and the heat builds up fast when the impeller is spinning in a dry, empty chamber. To replace this critical seal, we'll start by taking off the priming basket and then the impeller cover. If your pump has been working hard for the past few years, you might have a tough time getting the impeller off. On most pumps, the impeller should screw off clockwise, which is the opposite of the traditional lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. There should be a screwdriver key slot on the back of the pump to help hold the shaft. Try not to get frustrated with it, and be careful you don't damage the impeller, unless you're planning to replace it too. Damaging this surface will affect the pump volume and suction. Remember to turn clockwise to loosen. If the impeller is still stubborn, you can flip the pump vertically and squirt some WD-40 or liquid wrench on the shaft and let it soak down into the impeller threads. If it is still stubborn, you can carefully clamp a small vice grip onto the shaft in the space between the electric motor and the pump chamber. Beyond that, you may have to sacrifice the old impeller. When you get the impeller off, you'll see half of the ceramic seal on the back. Carefully pry this out with a small screwdriver. Here is a look at a similar design on a stay right pump. There are several impeller designs out there and some will be easier to get out than others. Now to get the other half of the ceramic seal out, flip the pump vertically and take off the back plate of the motor. On some pumps, you can skip this step and pry the back seal out with a screwdriver just like you did on the impeller. If it has a steel casing like this though, you will likely have to get it out this way. Unscrew the four bolts on the back. These are very long and extend through or past the motor coil so there's no need to pull them out. It's easier to put the pump back together if you leave them in place. Now you should be able to slip the back impeller housing off. Here's the other half of the ceramic seal. Take a piece of PVC pipe or a deep dish socket and carefully tap this out. There are a variety of seal manufacturers, designs, and sizes. So unless you can order a new seal based on your pump model, you'll need to measure the inner diameter of the seal and the outer diameter in millimeters, and then also match the design up to what you are replacing. The basic premise of this ceramic seal is one side is spring-loaded, and the two hard, slick sealing surfaces slide together as the pump spins, forming a watertight connection. Slip the new rear seal back into the housing.
and slip the new ceramic seal into the impeller with the ceramic surface facing outward. Don't use any glue or silicone sealant on this. When the pump heats up, glue or silicone will gum up the sealing surfaces and can also cause the seal to spin within the impeller, which you don't want. Put the impeller housing back on. Now screw the impeller back on counterclockwise and put the front cover of the impeller housing back on. It is a good idea to use some silicone sealant on this front cover to make sure it's watertight and airtight for good suction. Be sure to fill the priming chamber with water before you turn your pump back on. And now you should be good to go for several more years.